Hello everybody and welcome inside my home office here in beautiful Palm City, Florida. And this is episode number five of the Florida Project. Talk is cheap. There are a lot of people out there in the fitness industry, service-based industry, coaching world that are actually faking the funk and not truly walking their talk. Would you guys agree? So I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about my backstory before we actually get into today's topic and the show because a lot of people think, oh, you know what, Coach Raj, you own multiple personal training studios right now. You are actually doing well. You're able to leave your businesses in New York, fly to Florida, start up from scratch and build. Um, you must just be phenomenal. You must be lucky. You must have had a silver spoon. Something must have happened because it can't be that you're willing to do what others won't do so you could have what others won't have right? Because everybody has that mindset. But what I want to share with you, you know, just back in 2008, I was actually 2007, I was working as a personal trainer for the big box gyms, Equinox to be exact. And I was hustling just like everybody else. I was doing the damn thing. But what I learned very quickly is that when you're working for corporate America, you're building someone else's dream. And earlier that year, my grandmother had got sick and she got sick with cancer. Eventually she passed away about three and a half years ago and I had to take care of her and I took some time off of work and at Equinox they had this kind of charting factor. You had to hit a certain amount of numbers to keep your insurance or your medical health insurance and to keep your status. Now I was doing very well at Equinox, um, not to knock, but I had a, a great client base and it was great. Life was great. I had a great team of people. Some of my best friends were trainers there. I loved it. But what happened was I took that time off and with a short three weeks, four weeks, I lost my health insurance because my session count had dropped down below the number. And then I, once I lost that health insurance, I had to wait until the enrollment period again. So the whole thing here was I'm working hard for a company. I'm, I'm busting my hump and they're not got, they don't have my back. This really threw me for a loop for a little while. While I was taking care of my grandmother and struggling at the time, I didn't have a lot of income. I didn't. I wasn't making a shit ton of money. You know, I didn't have my own car at the time. I was actually taking a bus from my home to work back and forth. And you know, as a personal trainer, there's usually split shifts. So I'd go in the morning, take a bus home, take care of my grandma, eat. Then I go back in the evening. Now I was hustling. I wasn't. I wasn't. This is not a cry for me. I didn't mind taking a bus because I wasn't above that. Because that was my situation at the given time but I also had dreams I also had ambition and I knew that if it was to be it is up to me so I started to seek out knowledge right I started to seek out coaches I started to go to some seminars one of the gentlemen I met was Jeffrey Combs and I got on I went to a seminar that he created called uh, breakthroughs to success and I didn't have the money to go at the time but I found it on a credit card a little bit of here a little bit of there it's called making it happen. I got to go to Dallas, Texas, meet with Jeffrey and do go through his program. Now I signed up for something called his, his leadership program, which is breakthroughs to success. And that was an, a series of other workshops where I had to fly to one, I had to fly to Stockton, California. One, I had to fly to, uh, um, I believe somewhere in, in, I forget, San Francisco. And doing this, I didn't have the money, but I was willing to work as extra hard, pick up clients, do whatever I had to do to make it happen. And I hired Jeffrey to be my first business coach. And the first call he made, and just so you know, it was four, I believe it was four thousand, no, two thousand dollars for four calls. And I got on the phone, he says, What would you do if your grandma were to die today? How would you feel? See, this was the first time a coach had ever was that direct with me. And I'm sharing this with you so you understand where we're going with this episode. But I, I said, in fear, I said, relief. And at that moment, I knew that at some point when my grandma would leave this earth and go and drop the pain and go to heaven, that my life would change. So at that moment, I decided I was going to enter a free enterprise. I was gonna start my own business. I was gonna build something from the bottom up and it didn't matter what it was gonna take because I knew I didn't have a silver spoon. I knew I didn't have a trust fund. I knew I didn't have anybody who's gonna give me anything because no one had given me anything at my entire life. So I was gonna have to figure this out. 
And what did I do? I sat down, I got in a journal and I started writing. I wrote this business plan out. I created a company called Breakthroughs to Fitness. We create breakthroughs in life through fitness and exercise. It was great. You know, I had this idea, a aha moment. I'm gonna walk away, I'm gonna have my Jerry Maguire moment. You know, and I set this date of January 2008. If you guys know anything about January 2008, it was entering into the year of economics where you should not be going into business for yourself. Especially if you have no business sense, you didn't know anything about operations, marketing, sales, customer service, finance, you were just excited. Have you ever been excited? Have you ever been excited about something and didn't care? See, this is where I was. I knew that I had to stake my claim, burn the bridges, burn the ships and go forward. So I did, I made my declaration, told my friends I'm leaving. Now this is in 2007, to all of 2008, 12 months, right? It took me 11 months to tell my clients. In November, before Thanksgiving, I told my clients, hey, I'm gonna be leaving Equinox. What are you gonna do, Roz? I'm gonna go across the street and start my own business. Now, I didn't, I didn't solicit my clients. I simply told them where I was going, why I was doing it, and how I intended to do it. And many of them came across the street with me. That was the start of my business. Within a short period of time, I had already, my first month in January, when all my clients came across, I hit $10,000 that first month. Biggest month of my entire life. I'd never made $10,000. I'd never had $10,000 in my bank account at one time. I had student debt. I had no car. I had a client actually do a favor, mention to her friend to let me borrow his van, which was actually a, do a dog grooming van that had decals all around it. See, I didn't have an ego. I knew I had to get from A to B, so I drove that van until it broke down. So January comes around, I get paid, I go across the street, Luckily, there was a gentleman named Danny Holstein who had a gym above um, in Greenvale and he allowed me to train and a lot of trainers to do this and start their business. I started training, started hustling. Those clients though, what happens? Attrition. Attrition happens. The clients drop off. They get, they, things happen in their life. I'm like, whoa, what am I gonna do? So I remembered, I had this, there was an ambitious trainer that I knew. And I see him at the gym where I trained at at night because I was training for a bodybuilding show and he only had like one, two clients. He'd come in in the evening wearing his scully hat, big sweatshirt that said Hofstra you. I spent some time at Hofstra, gave them some money, didn't get a degree. And I said, hey, Greg, what are you doing, bro? I'm actually doing this company called Zango. See, first I pitched him on a network marketing company. He got excited about the product with me. We became friends. This guy, one day, I'm, it's raining. I'm about to walk into the bus. He picks me up, gives me a ride home. We start to talk. We, we con continue to talk. We start to build this network marketing company first. While I'm doing my personal training, he's training on his side on his own, right? What do you know? We start to hit it off. We go to a, a seminar in, in Utah for Zango, which is a big conference. He wins a trip to Hawaii. While he's on that trip to Hawaii, I have a, ah, oh, why don't I ask Greg to work with me? Greg took this conversation of, ah, why don't we partner together? So Greg comes back from Hawaii and he's fired up. Wow, well, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do, I go, hold on. This is my company. What we could do is start a boot camp. Why don't we do that? Why don't we date before we get married in the business sense, right? So we start this boot camp. Greg didn't have a lot of finances at the time. He didn't have much money. His mother had just passed from cancer, but I knew something, I saw something in Greg. I saw the spark in his eye. I could see the bounce in his step. And when I shared with him my vision, where we were going, key word there, vision, where we were going, he bought in full tilt, 100%, so much so that his girlfriend at the time was like, why are you hanging out with this Roz guy all the time? Why are you always talking about this Roz guy? Created collisions between him and his girlfriend at the time, but he was sold out on the vision of where we were gonna go. So he jumped on board. 
He started to do whatever I told him, read books, listen to seminars, do whatever we had to do. We went to see the legendary Jim Rome speak in Dallas, Texas at More Heart Than Talents, another event that Jeffrey Combs, I'm mentioning them because I give credit where credit is due. See, because if you're going to talk the talk and walk your talk, you need to be remember that nobody is self-made. We all have somebody that we've been inspired, motivated, or mentored by. See, Jeffrey was one of my first mentors. And I got so jacked up and I took Greg with me. I'm like, Greg, whatever you do, we got to drink the Kool-Aid. Jim Rohn told us we needed to read books. We read books. Jerry Clark told us we needed to learn how to market. We learned how to market. We came back. Platinum Boot Camp was banging. We were bringing people to the park. We were doing everything. But then winter came in New York. And we realized we didn't want to do that anymore. So we shut the boot camp down. We realized we we're going to do stuff indoors. And we started to build. And we hired another coach, somebody by the name of Sean Greeley and Eric Bruce, NPE, Net Profit Explosion. And that was awesome, right? We started to learn things about how to sell properly, auto closer, how to market property properly, how to actually build infrastructures in your business. Now, the MPE is responsible for some of the top people in the world. I mean, you got Forrest Walden, you got people like uh, Tony Maslin, you got people like Hut Ulrin, you got so many amazing people. Even Tony Robbins, I think, uh, I forget what his name is, Beck the Third or something, was in, in part of this community at the time. I'm sharing this with you guys. You got to be willing. If you're watching this show, I'm creating it and I'm sharing from the inside. I want you guys to go behind the curtains. In a few minutes, I'm going to take you behind this camera where you can see the actual things that we're doing currently in the, in the Florida project. But I want you guys to hear the backstory because it wasn't easy. It hasn't been easy. It, nothing is easy in business unless mommy or daddy want to finance it. Then you don't have the guts to go out and do it yourself. Yes, that's my belief and I believe in it strongly. So Greg and I are building this business. We're doing everything we can, breakthroughs to fitness. We don't even realize that we're just ignorance on fire. We got, we're in his basement. We move out of my one bedroom apartment with my grandma into his basement. He brings me into his home. We have our admin down there. We have two admins down there. We have an office desk. Everything's cranking. We're making money. We're like, Ross, Greg, we're gonna be millionaires. Year from now, we're gonna be, have gyms all over the world. But here's what I want you guys to know on your entrepreneurial journey. Murphy, he's your cousin. He's gonna show up when you don't want him to show up. He's gonna knock on your door and he's gonna put a crank in your game plan. See, in entrepreneurship and business, nothing is gonna be smooth sailing. You have to expect the unexpected, be prepared to step back and change. So at this point, we've hired trainers, we have an admin, things are cranking, we're making a good eight to $12,000 a month, we're doing things, we're making it happen, we're growing. Then we realize we grew too fast, we didn't have the knowledge and skills to build the systems in order to actually grow at the speed we wanted. The business model that we chose wasn't the correct one for us. We bought into the trends of, you need to have leverage, Raj. You need to do a boot camp. You need to have people. You get this many months. No, that wasn't our model. Here's my point. Know your model. What's your business model that's going to work for you? Is it one-on-one? -on -one? Is it semi-private? Is it online? Is it one-on-one -on -one personal training high-end? Is it nutri nutrition only? See, Find it. What is? Find out what model is passionate for you, so that you can thrive and not just survive, but dominate. Because it's what you love doing. See, we like one-on-one -on -one interaction, high-level coaching, as we learn from Anthony Robbins, right? So I wanted to be someone. I wanted to be able to connect with my clients on a deeper level than just reps, sets, and thirty to sixty-minute workouts. So we start to invest in our mind our human behavior, NLP, Ayrton hypnosis, speed reading. We grew, we fired everybody. We got our first location in Locust Valley and at the end of 2010, 2011, we fired, we changed our business model. We went back to one-on-one, -on -one, just Greg and I hustling, grinding, walking our talk, learning in the trench. Then we started to grow. We had an aha moment. Change the name, rebrand, meta burn, meta burn, metabolism, burning fat more efficiently, niching in, women only. 
creating the book somewhere around here, the menopause success triangle, hosting a summit, 25 speakers online, having people pay you three to five thousand dollars in coaching high end before the word high end was trendy or popular sharing you guys so you guys can hear a little bit of backstory so you guys know that business does happen overnight but it, sometimes that night can be long right so then now we have metaburn fitness one location thriving eight client trainers over 101 clients these are not $99 clients. We're hitting our numbers. We're looking at 10, 15, 20. We, we, we were at that upper echelon, 18,000, 19,000 for so long. Finally, we hit 20,000. Now, just so you know, when you hit 20,000, you're not rich. See, I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about operations a little bit later, one of the five pillars of building a fitness business. Just a little hint, I have a huge, huge, announcement to make at the end of this show so you're gonna want to stick around so we build the first location then we get the second location and now we have a huge team we're doing the damn thing we're dominating our local market on Long Island a lot of people know who we are we go to restaurants they know who we are it's great but then Murphy shows his face again trainers leave they open their own business utilizing our stuff the market gets a little bit saturated. People start moving in. Oh, there's money in that town. I need to go there. Sound familiar? Has it happened to you? Because if it hasn't, it will. So you need to be prepared. What do you do when Roz moves into your town? Just kidding. See, this happens because this is business. Now I just give you guys a fast forward. We've been in business for over 11 years, pretty much. Greg and I and our team. We're not one person. It's a team, a system. We've gone through some ups, some downs, some all kinds of things. Family people, family deaths, marriages. Greg is my best man. I was his best man at his wedding. He's actually about to have his firstborn in a couple of months to his amazing wife, Jana. See, life has to happen along with business. In my show, The Crush It Monday show yesterday, I talked about can business and marriage succeed together? You know, the problem is attention and clarity is what I found. Um, you know, when you're trying to coexist and build something that's great, and then you wanna build your family and your marriage, um, you have to make sure that you're given the proper amount of attention to both of those uh, important entities in your life. And I know for myself, um, being married for a couple years now and being in a, in a serious relationship for the last five and a half, this has been a struggle for me. So if you're a male um, or a female, but maybe uh, I'm going to talk to the men at this moment just because that's who I am. But let me ask you, have you struggled with this before? Mark, I just saw you jump on live. Have you struggled with keeping business and your family together and making sure that you were giving balance to both? Um, that's important. I want you guys to understand that it's critical that you understand these things. And what I'm about to pull back the curtain and share with you about what's going on here in the Florida Project and Metaburn Fitness, it started with a story. The story of how we got to where we are. Yes, we have multiple personal training studios. Now, we've just opened our fifth here in Florida. We've been able to attract amazing people like our buddy Billy Reuter, who's anchoring down the coaching staff down in New York right now for us. You guys will meet him in a future episode. He's going to come on and share with you his leadership principles, his ideal day strategies so that you can create your ideal life. He's a lifestyle strategist and one of my best friends and brothers. And I can't wait to have him on the show. Right. So we're here now. So what I want to share with you guys is what we're going to talk about today. Hopefully you didn't mind me sharing a little of the backstory. See, because in order to, for a lot of people to think that I'm in business for a year, two years, I'm going to be a millionaire, not going to happen. It can, but I'm not here to tell. I'm not here to sell you a pipe dream. I'm here to tell you the truth. If you really have a passion, a desire to create your million dollar message and get out there and make a huge impact in the world, you can do it. But you got to be willing, just as I said in episode four, the hustle is real. It's real. And if you're willing to do the damn thing day in and day out, no matter what happens, if you win or lose, you still get up in the morning, thank God for your feet hitting the floor and get to work. You can win. 
So what I'm gonna do is take a quick break. I'm gonna jump behind the, the scene so you can see the whiteboard behind me. And I wanna share with you three things that we're doing in our business right now. One, customer service. What's going on with that pillar? Two, what's going on with the operations? Three, what's going on with marketing? And specifically, the next phase of marketing, because if you watch episode two or three, I believe, you'll know that we are doing some stuff with Facebook, with community building, authority building, as we spoke about in the ACE principle in my book, right behind us, The One Hour Trainer, A 90-Day Roadmap to Creating a Profitable Fitness Business That You Love. So here's what I wanna do. I'm gonna take a quick pause, jump behind the screen here, flip the camera around, and I wanna share with you, A, the three pillars that I'm working on this, teach you the five pillars, give you the big announcement, and share with you guys some numbers behind the screen. Is that okay with you guys? I'll see you guys in a minute. And we're back here inside the, the office here. And like I said, I wanted to pull back the curtain a little bit and share with you a little bit of the inner workings of what we're doing here with the Florida Project, why I believe talk is cheap, why I believe there are a lot of coaches, gurus, and people jumping into this space trying to help fit pros, service-based business owners, studio owners, get leads, build their business. But here's the bottom line, in my opinion, a lot of them didn't build successful businesses, don't have the in the trenches knowledge, and really don't even have the in the trenches experience to talk the talk. They're simply positioning, bought someone's course, decided that there was money involved and I should go do this because I couldn't do the damn thing myself. Now there are a lot of people that I truly do respect that are coaches. There's some of the people that, and I'm not gonna go into their names, they know who they are. I think there's some amazing coaches in the fitness industry as well as the online marketing that are teaching people specific things about how to grow a profitable real business that creates a lifestyle. That's what I'm all about, creating a lifestyle so that you could do the things you wanna do when you want them for as long as you want with whomever you want. Real quick story about balance. This weekend, I was able to go and buy my wife a beach cruiser, purple, beautiful. I talked about it in a Crush It Monday show. And the reason I share this with you is because she wanted a bike, but I wanted to find something that I could do from the bottom of my heart, that I could deposit the love. I could show her that how much she meant to me. And she described this bike to me. I found it through the law of attraction. I went out and got the pieces that necessary. And yesterday, when she came home from her long day of work, it was sitting in our kitchen. So what do you do on Sundays here in Florida? You go out and buy your wife a new bike. You tell her you want to buy her a bike, and what does she want? She wants an old school Schwinn. Um, gotta say, it's a fixer upper, needs a little work. We're gonna get a new seat, oil up the chain, uh, maybe get a little paint job, but before you know it, you'll get us uh, some video of us out on the road. Probably not the road, we gotta go on trails. because She doesn't even know how to ride a bike, but make sure that you just mix in a little exercise in your day, because fitness business is all about body business balance and body she's got a beautiful helmet got a little ringy bell on there put on the cell phone attachment this is all because i create a lifestyle fitness business i don't need to work at 5 30 in the morning to 10 at night all day every day seven days a week i have created business systems that allow me to do the damn thing i want to do whenever i want for as long as i want that's how I was able to leave two multiple six-figure businesses in New York, fly to Florida on a whim, scratch, start a new business from scratch. Let's talk about that. So there are five pillars to a fitness business, in my opinion, and what we teach at Fitness Business Mastery and to our high-end Kaizen co coaching clients. And I'm gonna share with you what they are. Sales is number one. You guys know I love sales. I talk about it all the time. I mentioned one amazing book of Chet Holmes, The Ultimate Sales Machine, great book. Number two, you need to know marketing. And marketing is something that you really gotta understand the psychology of what it takes to attract your ideal client and how you're gonna move them through a relaxed um, a conversation. In the book Influence, Robert Cialdini teaches you guys the six triggers of influence. If you are not a reader, then you're not gonna be a successful entrepreneur, in my opinion. So pick up Robert Cialdini's book, influence the science and practice of influence now number three is customer service which another book i highly recommend you guys pick up is happiness delivering happiness by the founder of zappos tony
Tony Hesh. And when you understand that, you understand why MetaBurn Fitness thrives. We believe that if you focus on your client, they're gonna love you, trust you, and more importantly, you're gonna create that wow factor that makes them refer. And in my highly successful eight-week marketing program, which we're gonna talk about maybe someday down the road, the eight-week impact machine, I teach the rally referral machine. How you get your clients to refer to you over and over again, not just by asking them, systematically installing these processes in your be- in your business so that people want to give you clients and refer to you. Number four, operations. And number five here is finance, the money. So these are the five pillars of a personal training, service-based, studio-based business. It doesn't matter if you're yoga, it doesn't matter if you're massage therapist, it doesn't matter if you're personal training, boot camp, semi-private, CrossFit, all of them, if you have these five pillars installed in your business, you're gonna be successful. So let's talk a little bit about customer service right here. So these are the three I'm gonna talk about in this show. Customer service, operations, marketing, what's the next phase, and then if you stick to the end, I have a huge, huge announcement that I want you want to make. So let's talk about over here, facts, not hype. See, a lot of people can talk about facts and hype. Oh, they can hype their business up. Hey, I make this, I'm on pace to make six figures because I made $8,300 one month, maybe two. You can see these coaches that are posting their testimonials of their clients who are killing it. But then you go to their page, they got five followers, they got no social proof, they got no reviews, and they had a great run. One hit wonder in the music world. See, someone who's successful has done it over and over and over again. Those are the ones you should seek out for their advice, their opinion, their mentorship. And I want you guys to understand this because that's a lot, there's a lot of hype online and I'm not bringing that to you guys. That's why when I decided I was gonna do the Florida Project, I was gonna pull back the curtain. I wasn't gonna hide anything. I wasn't gonna hype it up and tell you I'm doing so much better than I'm actually doing. I'm gonna share with you exactly how we're doing. Today is September 18th. I didn't like to date the show, but it's September 18th. I moved to Florida on July 18th. So about two months, this is what I've been able to not only create, but create from scratch. Customer service is the number one thing that we work on. So what do I have? I have 23 active clients. My goal is 25. We actually have 24, one inactive right now. These are one-on-one clients. So what I do with one-on-one clients and why that's the business model for me, it works. As I shared with you in the backstory of Metaburn Fitness is that we tried boot camps, we tried semi-private. I don't like to be on anyone's schedule. So with personal training, if I need to go to Florida, if I need to go to New York or California to meet with you know John Spencer Ellison, hang out at the penthouse, then I can do so. I call my clients, I say, hey, Margaret, Stacy, Lisa, I'm away this weekend, let's reschedule for the next weekend. And here's the thing, when you understand operations, which I'm gonna share with you, you're gonna install backups for that. So like in New York, nothing has stopped running. Clients are being served, people are coming in, results are being created, new trainers are gonna go through our system of hiring, and we're gonna keep flowing. So these clients are at an average of about 480 per client. I'm doing about 53 sessions per week right now. I'm tired. (laughs) I haven't done that many sessions in probably about five years. Um, Not to gloat, not to impress you, but to impress upon you that I am not afraid to get in the game. I like to get my hands dirty. I like to touch my clients and say, hey, let's create some magic together. You have this goal, I have this solution. Boom, let's make it happen. I know that's you too. That's why you're watching. Because you have passion that's deeper than just money. You wanna make an impact in this world so that you can create a life for your family. This is how you do it. Fulfillment and delivery. So one of the things that I want you guys to understand with customer service in this pillar is that you gotta have a delivery and fulfillment process that's second to none, which is gonna lead to you creating the wow factor. That wow factor is all about you being the leading authority in your niche where people see, talk about you and say, wow, you know what, James is the man. John is the person that I need to go to for this. Roz talks about what? The topic of menopause and health for women who wanna create confident, strong bodies and look out, the, look out their mirror when they get out the shower and say, wow, that's what we do. We have that million dollar message that I keep reiterating every episode so that you guys dial in what is yours that's how you do it 
So you guys can see a little bit about do the numbers, you know, I'm not gonna put them up there. But just so you know, this is not all profit. I have expenses. We have marketing expenses. We, I, I am working out of another studio. I have supplies that I need. I have a camera guy. I have an editor. I have people on my team. So it's not all profit. Say so a lot of people say, I make this much money, but how much do you actually keep? And here's a tip, guys. If you're building a business, be willing to invest in your business, invest your profits back in your business, and your business will grow. Number two, operations. So you gotta have systems. Systems saves yourself time, energy, and money. So when you got systems, what systems are gonna play? So right away when I moved here, because we have systems in place in New York, it wasn't very hard for me to get up and running. I didn't have to figure out what my contracts look like. I didn't have to figure out what my lander pages look like. I didn't have to have new uh, testimonials, which we have now. I didn't have to have all of these things because I already had them in place, but I did need to have an email system. So I had to create a new list and um, active campaign so that I could actually make sure that this list was separate from my others so that when I'm marketing to them, I can send them a unique message. Florida clients, New York clients, Locust Valley, Oyster Bay clients right? Hiring, I needed a system for that. I'm about to bring on my first coach, which you guys will see in the next episode of who that person is and how I went through the process of kind of fretting them and vetting them and bringing them on. Two, tracking. How am I tracking? I use Ver 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 Vergaro. Well, yeah, that's, we have MindBody as well. MindBody for New York, um, Vergaro for here in Florida, trying a new system, right? And then you need to understand your bills and expenses. See, it's important that when you're dealing with operations, now bills and expenses drop into the fifth pillar of finance, but in this one I wanted to show you, I have a system, so I'm doing this. Now here's the thing, I'm doing this. See, a lot of fitness professionals, they're teaching now remote fitness, you know, uh, build a business that you're not hands-on and, and outsource, outsource, outsource. If you outsource, 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 your profits go down, 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 down. What I want you guys to do is think about what can you do that you can only do and then find the people that can do the things that you can't do and those are the ones you outsource to. Then the last one, because we all like to talk about marketing. This is the sexy shit, right? So you guys want to know exactly what are we going to do next? Because you see we have our 23 clients, which we were just one client off of our 25 goal. The next goal is 10 more higher in. So I'm bringing my premier product service to the market to, for the first time. So here's what we're gonna do. Again, so this is the marketing, we're building authority. So for the last two weeks, all I've done with my main man, Elijah Bowie, we've worked on campaigns and content so that uh, the market knows, loves, and trusts me, sees me in the market as the expert, the authority. So we've been sprinkling a little Metaburn pixie dust all around the area to thousands and thousands of our ideal clients. A couple things we all wanted to talk about. Um, I want to real quick, uh, let me just share um, something I tweaked on the campaigns to give us some better results. Um, and then I'll kind of walk through what I did there. All right, cool. So um, basically, um, let me go to... This is today's. Now we're looking at the authority amplifier. Then I'll show you inside the Ubiquity campaign. Um, so two, I made these changes yesterday. Two days ago, um, see that like we got we had 269 um, results. So 10 second views for the 35 bucks, um, which I took that down for. Uh, I took it down a little bit after uh, Raji asked me about that, just to slow it down a little bit. Um, but that's really what that and the pain and even one of my campaigns, um, is what caused me to go and make these changes. Um, I'm about to show us, but, um, if we go also video engagement and we'll see here. So we had the 269, 10 second views, but remember that doesn't mean someone watched all. now your authority info are still fucking crushing it because of the 269, 10 seconds, we got 123 to watch 25% of that video. Oh. And half of the 123 watched 50%. And that's golden. And look, like, you're not losing a bunch. That's that's perfect. Um, so the authority amplifier is still great. This one, the second one, um, it, I think because it's shorter, it was more authoritative to the point. Um, but I still wanted to do better. So we had these 269. So I made changes. And if you go to yesterday, 
with the same budget, we had 578 10 second views. So we got in front of people and um, you can see we got 50 people to watch all the way to the end where yesterday or the that's right and we had 31 and we've been segmenting this specifically inside of facebook's business manager now you guys can see a little bit about what we're talking about i'm gonna have elijah share with you some of the ins and outs of what we're doing with our whole content syndication method which i also design inside of our eight week marketing machine impact machine we talk about this method now this content just so you know is not just on facebook because there are other platforms so i'm using eight different pages across my businesses i'm using Facebook groups, I'm using private and free groups, I'm using Instagram marketing, as well as my blog, as well as live events. But the big thing is we're building a community, a community that of people that know, love, and trust us, that see us as the authority, that see us as the opportunity to solve their number one pain. When you become the person that can solve, when you have, when you need relief, you need a Rolaid, right? So this is what I want you guys to think about if you're growing a business. And then Toma, top of a mind awareness. You wanna be like Grant Cardone says, omnipresent everywhere. And how do you do that? By getting up early, staying up late, doing the damn thing consistently, day in and day out. Cause consistency is what will give you your business. Now, when I say hustle humbly, I don't mean you gotta hustle every day cause I believe in a lifestyle fitness business, right? but I believe that you gotta hustle strategically. See, when you hustle strategically, you know when you're going, you don't get distracted, you don't go on Facebook, when you're reading, when you're working on marketing campaigns, when you're building something, you're focused. And when you get focused, you can dial it in. And when you dial it in, things happen. That's where the magic happens. So here's the thing, three things I want you guys to know. Customer service, critical aspect to your business. What are you doing in your customer service to build your active client list, to make sure that you're creating raving fans, to know that your numbers equal what you want. I have a total number of sessions that I'll max out. I won't do any more because I understand that my lifestyle has to fit into that. I like to go to the basketball games and see my little son play on his travel team. I like to build bikes for my wife. I like to go on date nights with my wife. I like to have an opportunity to jump on a phone call and do a Zoom call with like an amazing guy like James Modi over in the UK or hang out with people here in town like excuse me, like John Garrity, or go to a dinner, whatever it is that you like to do, make sure that you factor it into your plan. Operations, know your operations. What are your systems that are gonna save you time, energy, and money, but more importantly, how you're gonna systemize them so that if you want to hand this off to someone else, you can do that. Create checklists, that's what I've been doing. We have checklists, so I can give this away. I don't have to track my Vergaro. I don't have to track my mind body. I don't have, to, all I have to do is verbally record my emails and send it off. I don't, the hiring process, create the ad, put it up on Indeed and Craigslist, boom. It's all there for us. The last one, marketing, building authority. How do you do that? The ACE principle, right? Authority, celebrity, and expert positioning. Content syndication. You need to understand what pieces of content are going to get your audience hot and bothered. See, right now I have pieces of content that are seen by thousands of people that are calling me up saying, what was that three things of? Three menopause secrets is one of them. Then you build your community. I have a private Facebook group and I have a group that I have open just for my current market that I'm building and I'm giving free content in there daily. I'm doing free, I'm teaching them how, I created a video, a piece of content on how to actually br make cauliflower barber, uh, buffalo style flatbread. Yes, cauliflower buffalo style flatbread. Hey, what's up everybody? Coach Roz here from Metaburn Fitness and author of the Menopause Success Triangle. And I'm here with a quick recipe tutorial that I wanna share with you guys. I was out to a restaurant in downtown Stewart and I had a flatbread cauliflower buffalo style uh, sandwich basically. It was amazing. But I wanted to know what exactly was in the sandwich, what was in it, and more importantly, how much fat 
how many carbohydrates, and what were the nutritional ingredients. So I went online, did a little Google search, found the, the ingredients, found the recipe, and then I thought, can I make this healthier? Can I make this a little bit more enjoyable for my MetaBurn family? And that's what we're gonna do here tonight. I created an awesome video, got it produced by my editor and the main man behind the scenes of these shows, Chris Sweeney. And then I'm hosting a live event on October 17th here in Florida for the local community to teach them, inspire them about health, fitness, and confidence. So that I can become and be in front of my audience and showcase my credibility, my expertness, as well as why they need to, and then I'm gonna place an offer behind that, right? That's how you become top of nowhere. That's how you build and become everywhere. As I said, if you guys wanna watch the previous episodes, you can go to fitnessbusinessmastery.com. This is the Florida Project 2018 with your host, Roz Slaughter. Here's the big announcement. So next week's show, just so you guys know, next week's show, we're gonna be talking about I'm going to bring in uh, a lot of what happens at Fitness Business Mastery, the Kaizen Group, Impact Machine, Black Belt Selling. So I'm going to share with you a little bit about my coaching, my consulting business, so you guys can see how am I balancing all of this? How am I juggling it all and making it work? But then on top of that, I'm going to sprinkle a little icing. Here it is. Wait for it. Drum roll. Drum roll. Boom announcement. Boom. We're going to be launching Metaburn Fitness Online. Metaburn Fitness Online. So with the offline business, I want to be able to touch more people, help more people, create a bigger impact. And I know how to get results. I know how to market. I know how to attract my ideal client. So why not put it on a platform that allows me to work with people remotely anywhere in the world and assist them in creating the best versions of themselves? See, because now I've done it offline, I know I can do it online. See, if you wanna go online and you haven't been able to create results for clients offline, I think you're mistaken, because it's not super easy. But I didn't decide, I, you know what, I go, I'm a firm believer in buying speed. I'm a firm believer in seeking out experts who know this subject. So what did I do? I called up my good buddy, James Modi, and I said, hey James, what are you doing, boss? What I wanna do is, here's my vision. Can you assist me in making that happen? He says, Roz, absolutely. So just in about an hour or so, I'm gonna be jumping on the phone, frameworking out an entire new business plan, launching it in less than a week, and sharing it all with you here on the Florida Project. I wanna thank you guys for watching from the bottom of my heart. This is truly one of my passion projects, and I love sharing with other fitness professionals, service providers, personal trainers, online coaches, so that they can grow, connect, and create a business that's profitable that they love, utilizing their million dollar message. I'm Coach Roz Slaughter from fitnessbusinessmastery.com and author of the One Hour Trainer book. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Boom!